Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The horizontal angulation mainly controls the overlapping of the images of adjacent teeth. This is vastly important when we're talking about making the interproximal examination. Now we'll demonstrate the horizontal angulation as it affects overlapping of adjacent teeth. To do this, we need a source of radiation, then objects whose images are desired, and finally a screen on which the image will be cast. Now, these red boxes represent the crowns of two adjacent teeth. This would be the buccal surface of the tooth, and this would be the uh, interproximal surface, or the proximal surface of the tooth. The proximal surface forms a right angle with the buccal surface. Now, these teeth represent two molar teeth, which are box-like in structure. I position the two together with a spacing that I can reproduce later, equal to the thickness of my center finger. Now we'll turn on the light, and we see the interproximal spacing is uh, of this width. Now if I change the horizontal angulation, the interproximal space is diminishing. Now if I go any farther than right here, the images will overlap. I'm going to indicate this position of the source by locating a little marker right here. When I exceed that position, the images of the teeth have overlapped. Now we'll go back the other way, past the marker, the interproximal space opens, reaches its maximum width, then begins to diminish, now, if I go farther than this, again, I will cause overlapping. So we'll put another marker to indicate this position. Exceeding that position causes overlapping. So directing the rays from any direction between these two markers allows us to open the contacts. These teeth represent molar teeth. Now we'll, re we'll repeat the demonstration using teeth of a different cross-sectional shape. Now, we'll take away one of the teeth at a time. The tooth that I'm replacing is circular in cross-section. Now a second one. Again, they are spaced apart equal to the thickness of my center finger. The direction of the rays that we're employing now certainly has caused the images of these teeth to separate. These teeth, or these boxes, represent anterior teeth or bicuspids, which are more or less round in cross-section. Now we'll change the horizontal angulation. We're going past the first marker. The space between the teeth is still wide open. And finally, way out on the side here someplace, is one position which if, which, if exceeded, would cause overlapping. And then <clears throat> way off to the other side is another position which, if exceeded, would cause overlapping. So the moral of this story is the choice of the horizontal angulation is far more liberal for these teeth of rounded cross-sectional shape than it is for the the more box-like molar teeth. Next, we'll investigate the role of the vertical angulation in causing overlapping. Now, I'll direct the rays downward, upwards. That makes the images move up and down on the screen, but it doesn't make them overlap. So overlapping is not a function of the vertical angulation. Well, there's only one thing left to try, and that is to see whether the position of the screen has anything to do with whether or not we have overlapping. So we'll move the screen this way. 
doesn't overlap. Move it that way, it doesn't overlap. We'll turn it around, it doesn't overlap. Nothing can I do with this screen that will make the images overlap. So the horizontal angulation alone is the cause of overlapping. Now we'll demonstrate the parallel method for choosing the proper horizontal angulation. I want to produce separated images on the screen. At the moment, they are not separated. To execute the parallel method, I must first direct the central ray at the interproximal space, and that's what I'm doing right now. But that condition by itself isn't enough. The contacts are still closed. So now I'll change the direction of the rays. Space opens. I guess I've gone too far, so I have to come back. Right now, I'm directing the rays properly. Now what's unique about this? One is I'm directing the central ray at the contact, and two, the front of the X-ray machine, indicated by this black line here, is parallel to this line, which indicates the buccal surfaces of the teeth. So when I have fulfilled both of those conditions, then the interproximal space is opened. Now I want to change the form of the tooth. Instead of having the proximal surface at right angles to the buccal surface, we'll, we'll change it. Now the proximal surfaces are not at right angles to the buccal surfaces. And even though I'm directing the central ray at the contact with the front of the x-ray machine parallel to the buccal surfaces, I have failed miserably. Now I'm going to invert these boxes. And we see that it is not possible to open the contact using the parallel method. So we have our second method entitled the sighting method. Now x-rays and sight both travel in straight lines. Now if we move our viewpoint over, we will finally reach a point of view which enables us to see through the contacts. Now, if I direct the x-ray beam in the same direction that we are now looking, the x-rays also will see through the contact. And so that is how the sighting method is executed. Simply find a direction that allows you to see through the contact and then project the x-ray beam in the same direction you are looking. Here is a practical example of how the sighting method is employed with a patient. We want to radiograph this young lady's two lower centrals. The viewpoint of the camera is such that I believe we could see between the teeth. And so the problem is to simply uh, direct the x-ray beam in the same direct direction we're looking. And so, the white line on the top of the cone is indicating the path the central ray is going to follow, and it's going right between the teeth, in the same direction that we are looking to see between the teeth. So we have now demonstrated two methods for choosing the horizontal angulation, the parallel method and the sighting method. Of the two methods, the sighting method is by far the more accurate. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.